This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is looking at soil science and we're looking at the organic material today in what we call the O horizon, which is a very important layer in the soil profile, the vertical distribution of layers of soil. And the O horizon plays a vital role in both the nutrients and the biosphere and in connection with the physical rock particles in the soil. So when we discuss organic material, there is the biological definition and the chemical definition. So the biological definition would be matter that is living. So that includes all of the flora and fauna, so the plants and animals, vegetation, every kind of animal and species and kingdom you can think of in a certain area of the world, either globally or a small geographic area, certain biome or a certain ecosystem. And then you also have the various species and types of plants and shrubs and grasses, trees, and everything is to do with the living biosphere and how it interacts and is joined in between the abiotic, the mineral component of the soil with the other core spaces of water and air and how it combines in this natural complex and chemically active part of the crust to allow vegetation and the biosphere to grow and survive in this environment. So the nutrient uptake, the water uptake, the transportation of nutrients and leaching both vertically and horizontally across and into the soil layers and horizons deep down towards the bedrock. And this process is how we maintain a vegetative area on the surface of the planet on the continents. And you can also argue there is a similar thing, similar environment going on on the ocean floors and various areas of the oceans with seagrasses and other living organisms like coral reefs. But we're looking mainly on the terrestrial environment right here. So the organic in terms of chemistry is the carbon based life forms and the, the very few main elements that make up the soil, which is elements like calcium, sodium, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, looking at hydroxyl groups and carboxyl groups in terms of biochemistry, looking at aluminum and magnesium and iron and silicon, all these main elements that exist in the crust, in the soil that have been derived from the weathering of the bedrock, whether it be sedimentary, igneous or metamorphic rock. So this organic material is vital to create this system of recycling nutrients from the living organisms that are in the soil with the root systems and uptake of nutrients and water for the process of photosynthesis and also the dead and decaying ex-living material or matter that is now being broken down by weathering, both chemical and physical weathering, and also by detrivores and decomposers and bacteria that live inside the O horizon and the top part of the A horizon to break down these organic materials and take out the nutrients. Those will be leached down towards the B horizon and form this big cycle of movement of nutrients, both nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, and potassium are the main ones for plant growth. In addition, you have the correct pH, the correct acidity or base or alkali of the soil, which will help to promote growth, which is more towards the slightly acidic, even into the slightly alkali or base of pHs between 5 to 6.5 to 7.5. And the differences in organic matter. So you have various types of litter based on leaf litter or branches and trees. So you get different types of organic material that can be on the surface and produce this decaying material. So it's important that after the plants die or the leaves die or anything dies in vegetation, in vegetation that is then put back into the soil. It, it is deposited and buried and burial and a little bit of compaction and the heat 
of the soil and the bacteria is going to break down that dead and decaying material into what we call humus. Now, humus is the last stage of decomposition, which usually happens a bit deeper down in the lower part of the O horizon and into the A horizon. And this humus plays a large role in what's called colloids, which is the very small particles which attract all of the elements I said earlier to stimulate the nutrient cycling and the growth of plants. So when we say about the O horizon, this is generally the surface horizon which you step on, let's say in a forest or any kind of grassland environment. And you might have the O horizon actually a bit deeper and underneath the A horizon, this is due to a disturbance or something that has occurred where the A horizon has been brought up to the top, to the surface, either with a agricultural farmland area, and this is called an AP layer, so it's kind of like the reverse or a inversion situation. But the O horizon is generally the top of the soil profile, as you can see in the top right diagram. Then we have the A horizon and the E. The E stands for alluviation, which means that the nutrients have been percolated and leached down from this area, from the A horizon into the E horizon, loss of nutrients, and then into the B horizon to accumulate most of the clay percentage. So the organic material, the organic matter, makes up about up to 30% of the O horizon. So the O horizon still contains mineral particles, rock particles, broken down weathered pieces of minerals and rocks, but it also contains a lot of pore spaces, a lot of water. So this pore space is large porosity because the O-Horizon is not compacted, it's not very strong and pushed down, it's very loose, and that gives a lot of space for the air to go in between the particles of the minerals and the organic material and the humus, and that allows water to percolate through and really stimulate the growth of a very fertile soil because this O-Horizon has basically space to breathe and move and organisms like worms and bacteria and root development and root systems can find their way easily through this or these two layers, the O and A horizon, to stimulate the growth of the biosphere. As you can see, the root system in the bottom right diagram here extends down through the O horizon into the A horizon, and you see how the forest floor during, let's say, the fall or the autumn in some areas of the world that experience these deciduous trees losing their leaves can be completely covered with this dead and decaying organic matter that's going to feed the soil over the next couple of years of all these nutrients that was in the living material. So as a recap, we're looking at the O horizon being formed through the flora and fauna on the surface, creating this very thin layer that's on the surface and there are different types of litter. There is the litter, which is the initial deposition or drop-in of this organic material. There's the next stage of breakdown, which is called fermentation under various moisture levels and the, amount, the, the availability of light and temperature. And the final layer would be, or the final stage of decomposition would be called humus, which would again allow for nutrients to be collected and exchanged and aid the fertility of the soil. You also have detritus and detrivores, which is or are the type of species or animals that are going to break down this organic material and create the humus. So it's dark in color based on the organic material and the level of organic material that can change and fluctuate. So the max will be 30% and the color would dictate how much organic material is in the soil. It's loose again, so it aids for higher levels of porosity and percolation and water flow. And the organic material can be leached, so water can grab a lot of those nutrients and bring with it down to deeper depths and through different layers. So layers like the E horizon and the B horizon can be filled with this transported and moved nutrients and water. So even though the O horizon itself is a very thin layer, now in a very fertile, very densely vegetated area, like let's say a rainforest, tropical or temperate rainforest, where you have consistent heat and sunlight 
and consistent water availability and you have this really thick dense forest with different layers from the forest floor to the mid-level to the canopy you're going to have a thick o horizon of consistent renewal and rejuvenation but generally the o horizon is going to be very thin maybe an inch or a couple of centimeters thick and even in this thin layer you can still break down the o horizon into three separate subdivisions or subordinates so the top layer where you have the loose litter that's fallen that's the oi or the fibric it's where you have this slight decomposition and it's just happened where the leaf has just fallen on the ground in the fall or autumn and this is the first initial layer then you have a little bit deeper down where you have the pushed and compacted organic material deeper underground by a few centimeters or inches and that would increase the temperature more consistent environment and allow for decomposition to continue over a longer period of time thus changing that organic material and altering the material and this is called the hemic or hemic then we have the oa which is the lower the lowest layer of the o horizon which is kind of like the transition period before the a horizon occurs where you have again that increased time it's a compacted deeper organic material where it can go into the fermentation level and into humus where you have the higher levels of decomposition and again this comes down to bulk density and time which is very important parameters to look at this is the earth science classroom thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the content uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe thank you again